Hey guys, welcome back. We're here with another Rate My Base episode. Uh, we're going to actually attack... Oops, sorry about that. We're going to attack the Dynamo. So he's actually a lot lower uh, level than we are. So we're definitely going to be able to beat his base 100%. We haven't attacked him before. Okay. So we don't use any scrolls in the series. I'll give you my analysis on his base design in the beginning. Uh, my thoughts, what I would tweak, what I would change, uh, what I like. Oops. Sorry about this, taking a little bit longer. Fumbling around. And, um, well, okay. There we go. Alright, so we have him favorited. Uh, so looking off, it looks like a decent base. Again, he's a low level, 1400 trophies. Um, he has a tower right there, which is in a really hard to get position. Uh, but he doesn't have a tower up here, which you definitely want to put a tower right there. Uh, it's a very hard to get position. No fireball towers yet. So you probably want to put um, either arrow towers. In this one, I'd probably put a uh, bomb tower. So then the bomb can come and splash all the troops that are going to be walking up through here. And in this one, I probably would put an arrow tower. Otherwise, it looks decent for the low level. Um, you have a lot of damaging towers right here. So you're hopefully trying to kill the hero in this section. And then the rest of these are kind of just like a delayed stall. Uh, the two towers up here are going to prevent people from getting like 100%. Uh, but it's not going to matter too much. If they get 98%, they're still going to win a good amount of gold from you. And they're still going to take a good amount of trophies. So I don't like having towers here. Uh, it's not really beneficial at this stage. Those guys would be more beneficial either over here or up here or possibly even down here in this corner to make this more like a valley of death so the more towers you have down here the more likely that people are going to die in this little corner and then the more chances are that you'll actually get some gems because people will use the apocalypse scroll or the healing scroll or some kind of scroll over here to get past this corner so that's what I would either do, I would either move these guys down here or move them over here to do more damage. Other than that, looks good. Um, we're going to go in like that. It doesn't really matter what troops we use. There's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, he's giving us one trophy, meaning he's you know, a lot lower level than us. So he has an arrow tower there, which is, which is decent. I would like to see a bomb tower there instead. Um, because if I bring a whole horde of troops, the bomb will sit over there for a little bit and then it will be able to do splash damage and hurt uh, a good majority of those troops. A couple bomb towers over there. Too many pyromancers, that's a very, really, really bad wave setup of having four pyromancers. Um, you definitely do not want to have that. At this stage, do a lot of Paladins, and then one Pyromancer in each wave. That's probably the most effective um, wave setup in the beginning, is you know four Paladins, or five Paladins, and then one Pyromancer. Even though people are spamming Knights, having a couple Bomb Towers, and having the Gargoyle Towers, those guys right there will help kill the Knights, and then the Paladins will help be a big blockade and take care of, you know, doing some damage to the hero. And they also protect the Pyromancers fairly well. So you use the hero button in the top left over here to call your troops. So you're able to call them over there and command them to destroy that tower. So the base layout, it works okay. Um pretty good for a low level base layout design wise. The troops though definitely need to be changed. You have way too many pyromancers in there. 
You don't need that many Pyromancers. Uh, you do want to have a lot more Paladins at this stage. They're extremely powerful, and even though people are using a lot of Knights, the Paladins will be beneficial, a lot more beneficial than the Pyromancers. Let's go take a real quick look at the uh, base layout again. So you can even notice the Pyromancer is the number one unit here, so meaning he has a lot in there. So if you were just to take a look at you'd see, oh yeah, he's got a lot of Pyromancers. Um, too many, too many, too many Pyromancers. Frosters aren't good really at all, uh, so I would take those out. And then a lot more Paladins. And make sure you keep upgrading your Paladins. Like I said, I would put a Bomb Tower there so that the Bomb could splash all the Knights or whatever units they're going to bring up. Most people probably at this stage won't be using cannons too much. Um, but either way, if they are, cannons are very, very effective at this stage, this lower levels. So that's why it's good to have a, you know, a decent amount of paladins and knights. Because if they bring out a bunch of cannons, then they'll all attack the hero. And then if they get past the hero or, you know, you run back to recover on your hero, your cannons are going to take the damage from the knights and the paladins. Pyromancers, you only need one. Don't put more than one in a wave. Um, other than that, this is a decent base for the low level area. Uh, you shouldn't come up with much trouble. But yeah, take out the paladin or take out the pyromancers. Take out the frosters. Um, put more paladins. Knights are also fairly decent. Uh, they are quicker than everything else, so they run up ahead of time. And then move these two towers either down here or over here, over here, and put them more consolidated together so they can try and kill the hero. So this base, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, those are my thoughts on it. It's a decent base for the low levels. Um, just keep working your way up. You could actually keep this same base design, the road layout, um, for you know higher up. And once you get Firebolt Towers, you want to put a Firebolt Tower right there, and then you want to put a Firebolt Tower right there. 